Welcome to Straight Line MTB, and today we're talking about taking our budget bike from ashy to classy. So welcome back to the channel. Let me pull back just one second because the Polygon Siskiyou T7 is in no way ashy. For $2,000, you are not going to find a better spec bike in the category, whether you're looking at boutique bikes, bike shop bikes, or even some direct-to-consumer bikes. So shout out to Polygon for making an amazing bike for under $2,000 with great components. But what I'm going to talk about is how you can take this Polygon T7 or any budget bike, and we're gonna talk about how you can spend your money wisely, whether you want some wheels, some suspension, or if you just wanna go crazy and just pick out some carbon things or some cool tires and lighten up the weight and bring this thing a little bit more performance gain. So out of the box, this Polygon T7 was 36 pounds with no pedals with tubes. So I think in this price range and even lower, you're going to get a full suspension bike of higher weight. So where you, if weight focus is something that you're looking at, especially on the T7, I think wheels is probably somewhere where I would start. So the wheels on this bike were really heavy. I think they're around the 24, 2500 gram mark, which is, yeah, if you're not out there weighing all your parts, that's pretty hefty. So I'm on the lucky end because we have several bikes sitting in the garage. So I pulled off the wheels from our Canyon CF4, which are the XM1700s by DT Swiss. They have the 350 hubs and it, it lightened the weight by over a pound for this bike. And then I also pulled off the V Snap Flow tires. Those are great tires with tons and tons of grip. The only problem is, is they're super heavy and a little bit on the draggy end. So I put on the Specialized Butcher T9 up front and the Eliminator T7 out back. So just those modifications there, I saved a, almost two pounds on this bike weight, which you are gonna instantly notice. Like I said, I think that's one of the better places to spend your money right out of the gate because I got better climbing efficiency and it, this is already a poppy bike and it made this bike just a little bit more poppy. The next area that I would focus on on our budget bike would be the suspension package. So the T7 comes with already an excellent shock. It's a Rock Shocks Deluxe Select Plus. So you're not gonna gain a ton of performance, I think, from higher end and shocks unless you're spending six, seven, maybe $800. So I would stay, I stuck with this for now. Um, but what I did do is take our Lyric Select Plus off of the Nuke Proof Scout 290 that we're riding and put it on this bike. And the performance was great. So the Recon RL that comes on this bike is a good performer for the price point, but that Lyric with that charger damper, it's got a better rebound uh, circuit. It just really stepped up the game up in the front, give you a little bit more confidence. It didn't pack up as quickly and as much as the Recon does when you're really pushing it really hard. It's a little bit more stiff and Again, it's almost a pound lighter. So with just those upgrades there, with the wheels, tires, and the fork, this bike dropped three pounds with pedals. So it came in at 33 pounds. So that's a pretty decent weight, I think, for a bike that's $2,000. So just factoring in those, those upgrades, the wheels you're looking on these specific model, about eight, $900 for the wheels. The fork is about $750. Um, so you are coming up in price a little bit, but I think the gains that you're getting are really worth the price. And then you don't have to go with these, uh, these items that we're talking about per se. You can go with a different brand. Just look for wheels. I would look something under the 2000 gram range. And for your fork, I would say it would stick around 2000 grams as well. And you're gonna save quite a bit of weight. So moving on to some other things that I think might be a little bit more preference where you can save some weight, but you might be getting a little bit more performance gain than anything. So again, like I said, I pulled the wheels off of our Canyon that we have, and it has the XT rear cassette where this bike came stock with the Diore cassette. So there you're probably saving around 200 grams. That's about a half a pound. You are getting a little bit more performance gain. That one I would say would be more of a look at me type of thing. You're not getting as much performance gain as weight gain, but it is an option. The other thing that I changed that is 
purely bling. For me, it was the anvil stem. So this is the suede stem. It's just a good looking stem. I wanted to put it on there. Um, but, and I also put the one up carbon bars on here. Between changing the handlebars and the stem, I saved about 200 grams, which is almost a half a pound. So while the bling looks nice, you are saving a little bit of weight. But I will say having these carbon bars, it does give you a little bit more compliance and a little bit more comfort up front. The entity bars that come on this bike, I felt them really stiff. And that could be something synonymous with other bikes in this price range where they're just really made to be burly and less compliant. So those bars were a great change. I also changed out the grips just for, just for fun. I got the Spank grips here, the 33. They're no weight savings, but a little bit performance, a little bit thicker, a little bit more cush, something that's gonna help keep you comfortable on the bike. And my favorite brand of brakes, and my favorite brake is the Magura Trail Sports. There are four piston front, two piston rear. Very similar to what comes on this uh, T7, but these are Tektro Orion brakes. So it is a four piston front, two piston rear. They don't perform as well as a Magura, and I think that's gonna be the same as on other budget bikes. That's another area where you can you can upgrade and thinking about the brakes do work well, but what you do notice as you get faster, more confident on the bike, having a brake that's gonna be more responsive to you is gonna really help your confidence. And shockingly, you think brakes just slow you down, but they do give you more confidence to go faster. So that's another area where I would change. And I do, you would save some weight because those Maguras are on the lighter side compared to these Orions. And another thing, a lot of times on our budget bikes, they won't come with a dropper post. A lot of the bikes in the $2,000 range and lower don't come with dropper posts, but again, Polygon, at $2,000, you're getting a 170 millimeter dropper. This is a Trans X. They are very similar to the Brand X droppers and they're $135. I think that is an awesome upgrade if you don't have it. That might be one of the first upgrades that I make if your bike doesn't come with a dropper. It would, to me, it would trump your wheels and your suspension because that is very helpful on the downhills. But again, this is a dropper that I would not upgrade. I would recommend the Brand X or the, even this Trans X dropper over some of the other bigger names because it is a little bit on the heavier side, but uh, the performance on these have been great. I've had several of them and they've lasted for years with no issues. The only thing that I would upgrade and change is the dropper lever. Their Trans X lever is not very nice and kind of kind of grumpy when you're pushing on it. So something nice like a Wolf Tooth or a 1-Up would be a great addition. Our T7 came with the Diora 12-speed drivetrain, which I think, you know, might be on the heavier side. Most of that weight with all drivetrains is mostly going to come from your cassette. That could be something like we talked about you can change. Um, but one thing I would change would be the shifter. Uh, not that the shifter isn't any good. It works flawlessly and feels great. Just that I've been spoiled with the XT. I like the double downshift. So that's something I would change before probably I would change any of the other components on this bike because it's actual performance gain that you're going to notice right away. So these are some great tips for you to upgrade your budget bike, but also to be thoughtful where you're spending your money because you don't want to end up having a $6,000 budget bike where you could may have started off spending that money right out the gate and getting you another bike. But if it is a bike like the T7 where it's worthy of some upgrades, that might be another story where you want to spend that money. But I think what we talked about starting with wheels, going into the suspension and then going into the contact points is some, a great place to start and really keep your budget bike more budget friendly. So again, thank you guys for joining us on Straight Line MTB. Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe because we will continue to ride our T7 and give you some feedback on this amazing budget bike, as well as some of our boutique bikes and some of our other high-end bikes that we are riding. If you guys have any questions or comments, don't forget to leave them below. I'll be happy to answer them for you. And then don't forget to follow us on Instagram at straightline underscore MTB and on TikTok at the same address, straightlinemtb.com as well. And thank you guys for joining us and we'll see you on the next video. XT, just because I like the, the little bit more Christmas in the, Christmas, function over fashion. No, okay. Wait, what did you, what did you say to start? No, that's dumb. No, none of that sounded good, sorry. What you want?